Okay, we can get going. Um, so this week, we're going to leave play of the cards behind, but I want you to, when you're bidding, it's always very important to be thinking about how the cards will play. And we learned a couple basic techniques in the last three weeks on how to get rid of losers, on how to finesse, on the values of sequences in, in suits. And I think that we need to always keep those cards in mind while we're bidding, because we're only bidding, right? We're bidding um, to be able to play the cards. And we're, unless we have a good idea of how many tricks we're going to take, it makes the auction a little bit more difficult. Now, stick with me for a second here. This is, this is something that I, and, and if you could give me some answers so I'm, so I'm sure you're with me. Why is two clubs, why is the opening bid of two clubs forcing? And there's two reasons, right? And the first one, obviously, is it doesn't necessarily show clubs. But can anybody tell me what the second reason is that two clubs is always forcing? Yeah, and it's actually the first part of that first word that you answered there, Les. Unlimited, right? If I have an unlimited hand, then you have to bid because I may have game in my hand for all you know. So it's the unlimited part. So let's say that we invented a bidding system, okay? This is not anything we're playing right now, but let's say we invented a bidding system which said that one of any suit was an unlimited hand. If I open one spade, that means I have five spades and I could have as many, I could have all the rest of the points in the deck that could fit into a 13 card hand. I'm not sure what that is, probably isn't 40. Um, but anyways, it's unlimited. If, I, if we played a bidding system that one of a suit was unlimited, then one would be, bidding one spade would be a forcing bid. And bidding one heart would be a forcing bid, right? Only because the hand is unlimited, all right? So, concept that we have to get our heads wrapped around is that whenever our partner has an unlimited hand, we are forced to bid. Now this comes up most often when opener opens, opens one of a suit and then North responds one of a suit or two of a suit. And, and, and if North has not passed yet, if the partner has not passed yet, right, if, one, if South opens one heart and North bids one spade, then the hand is forcing. Not because of a rule. Right? Not because of, of, a, of the little nursery rhyme which is responders' new suit is forcing. The concept is, the dynamic is, it's forcing because we don't know how many points he has. All right, you with me on this? This is really important because when a hand is unlimited, when one of the partner's hands is unlimited, that means that when we ask the all-important question, which is, is game still possible, then of course it is. And whenever game is still possible, then we really want to continue bidding. And obviously, when a hand is limited, I'm sorry, when a hand is unlimited, then game will always be possible. Bridge players could wear this around their wrists. Is game possible? Because the point of the auction, right, what our goal is, is to get to a game contract, right? The game bonus, especially in uh, imp games, is the critical thing. We want to get that game bonus, which is 300 extra points when we're non-vulnerable and 500 extra points when we're vulnerable. That's the biggest bonus that we're going to get most of the time, with the exception of a slam. But we can focus on game. And, gen and then just recognize when slam is possible. So our primary goal should be getting to game in any auction. That's what we're headed for. And when we discover that we can't get to game, 
Then we want to get out in the cheapest, best strain. And when I say strain, I mean the suit or no trump, right? The best strain of, of a contract. So we, if we discover we can't get to four hearts, we'd rather not be in three hearts. So if we can figure that out at two hearts and sign off, we're in better shape, right? So if we can, and the, okay, so we want to get to game. And the games that we want to get to are based on the points they give and the number of tricks that you have to take to get them. So the best game of all is a major game. You get 420 points or 620 points, depending on whether you're not vulnerable or you're vulnerable. The next best game is a no trump game. Now, if you just get the minimum of nine tricks, then it's 400 points or 600 points. But each over trick gets you an extra 30, so no trump can be very profitable. If you're playing match points and you take 10 no trump tricks, you get 430 and beat everybody who took 10 tricks in a major who only got 420. And then finally, if we can't find a game in those two strains, in either a suit or a no trump, then with a gun to our head, we will bid a minor game. Minor games are not very, not very happy. You have to take 11 tricks. It's nearly a slam. And then, having taken 11 tricks, you'll only get the same number of points that you would get for taking 9 tricks and no trump. So our bidding system is geared around those three goals. Whether you're playing Standard American, if you're playing Precision, if you're playing 2 over 1, it doesn't matter. The goal is still the same. Get to a game. Okay, everybody with me? Now, when we start playing bridge, if you were like me, what you did was you spent a lot of time memorizing what bid you bid with certain points. And you used a point system that was very simple. Four, three, two, one. Four for an ace. Three for a king, two for a queen, and one for a jack. Now, what I'm here to tell you, despite what you hear, right, is that you really don't need anything more than that because those points are pretty inaccurate, right? There's no doubt that aces and kings um, are, are worth more than queens and jacks, right? And the other thing is that they don't really add up because if they're not, I mean, if you have, you you very much would rather have a king, queen, ten in a suit than an ace, jack in a suit. Five points, the same sill, right? Still both worth five points. But the king, queen, ten is all, will probably get you more tricks. So the points are kind of a weird sort of way of judging. Now, one of, the, one of my favorite bridge regs, and before we go further, I'm sure that you have all looked at evaluation systems, and, and I have learned three or four of them, right? We've seen there are, there's a wonderful thing called Czar points, there's Bergen points, there's um, a k &R system that you need to have a computer with you to make figure out what it is, um, which doesn't work at most duplicate games when you're playing live. Um, there's a losing trick count. And there's all these evaluation systems. And, and frankly, I learned them all. And I've settled, I, I'm trust, what I trust now instead is what I call um, my uh, Supreme Court version of what an opening hand looks like and what my hand is worth, which is, you know, I don't know quite how to describe it, but I know it when I see it. Okay, like the way they describe pornography at one point, Justice Potter, I think. I don't know. I don't know what, I can't just tell you what an opening hand is, but I know it when I see it. And one of the best ways to think about this is to think about how the cards will play. If you have 12 points and they're in four suits, spread out over four suits, and the suits are split four, three, 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 that hand will never be as good as a hand that has 12 points and has them divided into two suits, and those two suits are 5-4, and you have a stiff. Okay, So we can see what the assets are, right? and that's the word Dorothy Truscott uses in 
in her book, which her slipping my mind right now, but she talks about having assets. She doesn't say, I'll give five points for a void. I will give three points for a doubleton. Instead, she's saying, this is an asset. This is an asset. I got 12 points, and I got, and I got this, and I got this, and I got this, right? And that's how, that's how experts do it. Experts, the, the world-class players that we watch, aren't sitting there doing K&R in their head or Bergen evaluation or czar points. They know what will score. They know how to take tricks better than anybody else. So they know the cards that they think will be helpful. So what we do is we have this very fluid process where one partner bids, provides some information, the other partner bids, provides some information, and that continues to go on. And every time you learn some information, the value of your hand will change. And you constantly have to keep fluid when you're evaluating your hand. You can't just settle on, okay, I got a 12-point minimum opener. And then have your partner um, bid something and say, I still have a 12-point opener. You need to look. Did your hand get better? Did it get worse? And you know the reason you know whether it got better or better or worse is because you can see how the hand will play better now. So we bid to play. We bid to play. Right? So if if your partner you know, it says they have a balanced hand, but you have a long suit and you have a void. You know, if it turns out that your void is where your partner has three losers, right, then you know that you're going to be in good shape, right? So we have to keep matching up our hands. If, if our partner bids one suit and then bids another suit and we have fits in both suits, our hand got better. Right? So we constantly need to be fluid. All right, so I think you are all seeing Norse hand, or I hope so, and we're just going to bid some hands, and we'll talk a little bit, and we're going to view everything for now from the from the responders hand. The responders, and then and let's start with that, and we'll talk more as we go. So the first bid by opener, unless it's a no trump hand is kind of broad, right? The points of this one spade, can any be... Are you... I, I don't... You should be only... if you're Unless you're playing from a tablet, well, you wouldn't be able to hear me there. Are we sure we can only see Norse hand? Is everybody else just seeing Norse hand? Okay, what I want you to do is I want you to kib North's hand. Okay, just and you do that by clicking on my name in the North hand. And there should be an option for you to um, kib just that hand. We'll go ahead because it's not that important, but I'd, I'd like you, if possible, just to look at Norse hand because it'll be simpler. It'll be a little simpler, but um, and I don't want you thinking about the other hand um, when it's not bidding. So, anyways, one spade is a broad bid, right? It is a limited bid, right? Because we didn't open two clubs, so we know we don't have that huge hand. Um, it basically says I have five plus spades and anywhere from 12 to 21 points. A broad range is pretty useless in an auction, right? When the question is, the critical question, is game possible? Broad bids with long ranges and no idea what distribution is are not very helpful, Right? That's why we love one no trump and two no trump openings. It's because they are helpful. They're limited. They're either 15 to 17 or 20 to 21. And they also give you some idea about distribution. Right? We're going to be 5332 or some variation of, of, of uh, 4333 or 
So it's much better, right? When you get those one no Trump openers, it makes life easy on the responder. So looking at North hand, um, one thing I really like to do and I encourage you to do is to name your hand. And I, I know it's just a little silly thing that maybe just I do. But I like to have an idea all the way through the auction of what my hand is. And I think it starts by actually identifying my hand. So I have, North has a 5-3-3-2 three, three, hand, right? In fact, it's a hand that probably would have gotten opened, right? So in a responder's seat, this 12-point hand, um, is, um, is a very good hand. It's basically an opening hand versus an opening hand. Um, and we, we know that that is a hand that is probably going to want to go to game nine times out of ten. Now, the other thing that I like to do is I like to identify the assets. What makes this hand good? Right? Does anybody want to volunteer an idea on why responder's hand has some value? Beyond the points going beyond the ace, king, queen, king. What is it that makes this hand valuable? Yeah, the sequence, right? Ace, king, queen, nine, seven. A five-card suit headed by a sequence. Based on what we talked about last week, why is that going to be a valuable suit? Okay, well, that's a quick answer, but, uh, and that's closer trick taking. If you're the declarer and you look across at the dummy and you say a five card suit headed by the ace, king, queen. Right? Why is that going to be valuable to you? There you go. Exactly. Your bid to play. A five-card suit like that means you're going to have a place to pitch losers. Now, sitting in North seat at this point in the auction, you have no idea if that's how things are going to shape up. But you know that it's a really good thing, right? And it could happen. What if? What if? Um, no problem. What if? Uh, opener uh, has is short in diamonds and can start pitching losing clubs on it, right? We could be in good shape. Somebody else identified a good one, a two-card suit, a doubleton, which means even if partner has three, right, and has a heart loser, it means there's a chance that we're going to be able to rough a heart, right? So this hand that has 12 points is really starting to shape up. we got the five-card suit where we might be able to pitch losers, we have a doubleton, where we might be able to rough losers, and all this is working for us because we have three spades, because we know we have a fit. Right? So this is a game hand. Ultimately is what you decide. You're almost there just by going four, three, two, one. But once you see the assets of this hand, you are definitely going to want to be in game. So what would people bid here? I think those are the two correct answers. Four spades are two diamonds. But let's, let's think about the most helpful bit. Four spades is where we know we can get to. Nor North knows that, that they have four spades. Right now, sitting there, they know she, North knows there's a, four, a, a spade game. But there's another issue here, which is how many points does South have? At least. That's the minimum, but we're going to be really concerned about the maximum. Yeah, it's unknown. We He could have anywhere from 12, or if you're playing with me on a good day, you know, 10, 9, 10 points, up to 21, 22, depending on, um, um, you know, 20, 21, depending on all sorts of things, right? But I've got, if I've got 19 points and you've got that great hand, right, we may want to be in slam. 
right? So you, this is an idea about um, about how to use four spades. And most people would use four spades here with a long spade suit um, and use it preemptively. But what we can do is we can bid two diamonds. Now that two diamond bid is really helpful, right? How many, from Sal's perspective, how many points has North said they have? Have, have, and the quick critical question here is, has North limited the points in their hand? Yeah, playing standard, 10 plus, and it's the plus that's critical. We don't know if they have all the rest of the points in the deck. So North, I mean South, has to bid. Not because a responder's new suit is always forcing, or because a bid at the two level is forcing. We have to bid because we don't know how many points South North has. They could have all the rest of the points in the deck, although it looks like with its two heart bid that maybe East does has some points. But you can see the point here is the bid is forcing, the bid is dynamic because it is an unlimited hand. If your partner is unlimited, then when you look down at your wristband, and it says, is game possible? You have to say, yeah, obviously, game could be possible. I don't know how many points my partner has here at all. Right? So what we're looking at is the dynamics of this, okay? the dynamics of it. So South has to bid, and they bid three diamonds. So it appears as though, you know, I mean, North's hand is four diamonds or five diamonds, and South has to bid, and um, they very well might just choose to support the diamond hand. So one thing we can take from this is, especially when we're just playing standard American, and this is the reason why two over one is really what you want to be playing. In two over one, we'd have a game force right now. But playing standard, there's no game force yet. So, so now it goes back to North. And now North can decide what to do. Now, South didn't do anything crazy, right? They didn't... They didn't uh, they didn't um, make a game bid themselves or make some strong bid. They, they just, you know, kind of followed along, right? So they did nothing to indicate that they had a strong hand here. Let me do something. Let's get, uh, let's get East out of the way for a moment now. All right, so here we got one spade, two diamonds, and and South bids three diamonds. Now, opener's job, as best as possible on a rebid, is to limit their hand. And on that first bid that he made, he was he had this broad range. In response to Partners, when partner responds, what opener wants to do on rebid is wants to just simply define their hand. Right? So he's bid one spade and then he bid three diamonds. Right? So not a strong bid. Nothing, nothing spectacular. You know, he didn't reverse. He just simply said, "Well, I've got some diamonds." So now, North, knowing that South doesn't have. A huge hand or a big hand or a hand that was worth a jump or anything like that. Now what does North want to do? Now we can bid four spades. Now we can bid four spades. Notice if we were playing two over one, 
we could bid three spades because the fact that we bid two diamonds had already promised we would always go to game. So they could bid three spades just in case South, you know, had some kind of special circumstance, right? Just to leave room. But here, there's no point in not just simply going straight to four spades. Okay, so there was there were some dynamics here, and we started off in North Sand by first recognizing the strength of our 12-point hand. I mean, you can have a really bad 12-point hand. Take 12 points and spread them out over a 4-3-3-3 three, three, three distribution, and you have a pretty crappy hand, right? But this hand, as soon as we saw we had the trump fit, we found other assets, other reasons we wanted to go to game. And, in fact, if partners had a stronger hand, we would have been interested in slam because we were going to be able to provide him places to pitch losers and places to rough losers. Plus, we had the king of spades and two others. And this hand should be fairly easy to make. Okay, everybody with me? All right, let's try another one. Get the same broad-ended bid, right? Could have up to 19 points or so, right? But no way to know until opener gets a chance to rebid. So this hand looks sort of similar. We've got the ace third in spades, so we know there's a trump fit. When we have the king, queen, jack fifth of diamonds, we have a doubleton in hearts. Is this hand better or worse than the last hand that we had? Yeah, it's not as good. We still have the doubleton, but point-wise, we have 6, 7, 12 points. 5, 6, 7, 8, 12 points again. Um, but this time, our queen of hearts is essentially were, you know, wasted. It's, you know, the value of that suit is probably going to be in the fact that if partner has a losing heart, he might be able to get a rough. Um, it could have some value if partner had the king of hearts, right, because that would ensure one trick. The diamonds are still five, but what card do we really want the opener to have in their hand? Yeah, what if partner had ace doubleton in their hand? That would be really cool, right? Because then we'd have three pitches probably in north. But again, the value of that five card suit should never be overlooked. Even without these, it has a lot of value because it might provide a pitch for a loser, right? And as we talked about in the last couple weeks, you know, if you want to get good scores, especially in match points, you want to be the one person who makes one extra trick by figuring out how to pitch a loser or how to rough a loser, and that will be tremendous. So here we are. We've got, again, 12 points. Two points are pretty wasted. As assets, good things going for our hand, we do have a doubleton heart, and we do have a five-card suit. So does anybody think this is a game-going hand? I mean, we're going to name it right now. Are we going to call this hand a balanced game hand, or are we going to call it a balanced invitation hand, invitational hand? Yeah, I think I wouldn't get too excited about it either. I mean, especially if I'm playing with someone that I know will open um, light. Um, I'm not going to jump all over this kind of odd 12-point hand. Now, you could run all sorts of evaluations. Like, what if you did losing trick count, right? And you saw that, which is not a very accurate way of doing things, right? But 
um, you got a couple spades. Hopefully they'd be covered by the the opener spades. You know, so maybe you wouldn't lose any spades. You got a couple of hearts, but one of those could be covered, or two of them could be covered by the hearts. You got three club losers, but who knows? Maybe opener has cards that cover those, right? So I, I'm not a fan of losing trick count because of that, because you don't know whether they're losers until you know what partner has in his hands. And right now, all you know is he's got spades. Right. So what are we going to do? So we are going to, because we're invitational, we're going to make partner bid again, right? We're not, you know, with three spades, we could, if we had a system that allowed us to go one spade, three spades, which is three of them, then I guess that's one way of inviting in spades. But most people would like to save uh, one spade, three spades for a four card major, or they'd rather, I mean, for having four support. Or they'd rather have some sort of other bidding gadget to allow them to distinguish between three and four. Because a nine card fit is always better than an eight card fit. It opens up end plays. It opens all sorts of options. You get more roughs. A nine card fit is always better than an eight card fit. So we like to be able to show opener that, right? which would be to bid one spade. If we had four spades and an invitational hand, we'd bid three spades. But instead here, we bid two diamonds. Because we don't know what kind of hand yet that, that South has. Um, so we're going to get a pass. We get a pass from East. And An opener has done us the great favor of limiting his hand, right? He's shown a jump, so we know that he has more than a minimum hand, right? Um, and he's gone to three spades, so he's showing an extra spade as well. So notice opener, very often, opener is not, is, his duties are pretty simple, which is why we're looking at the responder's hand. Right? Very often the opener is making a bid and then doing his best to, to narrow that range of points. That's the strength of his hand. He's trying to show you his hand. And when he bids one spade, three spades here, he's showing you an invitational hand in spades. And an extra spade here. Absolutely. Absolutely a six spade. So now, how is your hand looking? Yeah, I mean, it's right. We, we know we're going to game now, right? Because we had an invitational hand, and he has an invitational hand. And if you go to that game matrix I sent you, a, an invitational hand, opposite an invitational hand, plays in game, right? Or better. So we've got one spade, two diamonds, three spades. We know we're going to game. And we know partner probably has a really good 15 or 16, 17 points, right? So this bid is, is we know we're going to game now. What we haven't really settled is, you know, if there's a slam potential. So... At this point in time, responder has to start visualizing, right? Now, you don't want, this is not the point where you want to be counting points or counting losing tricks or anything like that. You need to start asking yourself some questions. So partner has 16, 17 points. How many points can he have in spades? Yeah, he only has six points. So that means he's got 10 points in the other suits. Of course, we really don't know where. So is it possible he has the Ace of Diamonds? That'd be sweet. 
Is it possible that he's short in clubs? That's possible. Could he have the ace king of hearts? Well, if he had six spades, six points in spades, seven in hearts, um, the ace of diamonds, that gets him about up to all he can have, right? So, so you can kind of start picturing by the, his point range what he could have. Without a doubt, we'd love him to have the ace of diamonds, right? Because that means he's, he very well would get a chance to pitch some losers. And we don't mind if he has a loser in hearts, so long as he has at least three of them, because he might get to rough it. So, do we think we can go to slam on our own, though? I don't, I don't think so either. And plus, this is one of the problems with standard America, is that if we were playing game forcing, if we were playing a game forcing two over one bid, we'd have a lot more room to in investigate slams. Um, but here, we haven't, we have yet to tell the, tell our partner we like spades. <laughs> so, so I, we're going to just sign off here. Now, if partner is, you know, gets excited about the fact that you have Trump support, you know, maybe he'll do more if he's really big, maybe not. You see, at no point yet have we ever like said, okay, I'm going to give myself five points for a void and three points for a singleton and one point for a doubleton because all that's unnecessary and the points aren't accurate. The points don't matter. It's where the points are and how they can be used. All right. On this one, we saw the extra spade. Well, we can talk about that, but I, I think two over one is the easiest bidding system in the world. And, um, and I am always surprised when people hold long, long classes about two over one. Um, I mean, Hondo has a, Howard has a uh, two over one PDF. That's how simple it is. It's how simple it is. It doesn't need weeks and weeks and weeks of work. I know that my one of my favorite Brit par partners, I made her start playing two over one. She never read anything. I just told her she couldn't bid two over one anymore unless she had a game going hand. And if she was stuck for a bid, then she had to bid one no trump. And that worked. So, um, but we can talk about that. You know, um, I, I, I think that it's kind of like... Uh, not to digress, but we, in bridge, we can make things much harder than they really are. Like you can spend hours learning how to do czar points, right? Or, or you could just look at how, how am I going to take tricks with this hand? Right? And two over one is definitely one of the ways that people overcomplicate things. It's just not that hard. All right, so we did have the ace of diamonds, but we have a club loser. And we have uh, two heart losers. Right? So we're probably in the right place. If we were going to play this, you know, obviously we're going to get a heart rough to take care of one loser. Could lose the club. But if the cards, are, if the timing is right, right, if, if they lead something and we're able to take the first trick, then we're going to pull Trump. And then we're going to cross over to the dummy. And we're going to have two pitches from there. So we might not lose a club and we might not lose a heart. Um, and I mean, we will not lose a club, but only lose one heart. So, um, a good fit, and we made the right decision bidding wise. Partner starts with one heart. This time we don't have a fit, right? Which makes things more complicated. If we were going to name this hand, what would we name it? An invitational hand, a minimum hand, a maximum hand? We've got seven, eight, eleven points. We have a five card suit and a four card suit. So we're three, one, four, five. Right? 
the ace and the king of spades are together. That's sweet. And then we have the remaining points that we have are in the club suit. So this is a hand with some potential. Definitely unbalanced, two suitor. And I would say it's an invitational hand. So if I were to name this hand, I'd say, hello, Mr. Unbalanced Two Suitor. That's what I'm going to call you. So what do we bid? Partner says he has hearts, but he has not limited his hand below about 19. We can't bid spades, right? because we don't have four. If we bid one no trump, we'd be saying we were six to nine or a bad 10. So we're basically got to bid our suits. And you get a two heart bid. So opener has helped out a lot, right? Did his job. The opener did his job and he limited his hands so that you can make some decisions. And now you know that he's probably 12 to 14 or a bad 15 and he, and he likely has extra length in hearts. He chose not to support your club bid with three or to bid diamonds with three or four Right? He bid the hearts again. In most cases, this will be six. And it could be stuck for a bid. What if he had what if he had four spades, five hearts, and two two in the minors? Right? He could be stuck. He might have to bid hearts again. But it doesn't matter much to you. You still haven't found a trump suit, although six one in hearts might do the job. But now at least you know he's got he's limited to 14. And you can ask yourself, is game possible? Yeah, it is. It's still possible, right? But you know, we don't know that for sure yet. Um, it doesn't look like we have a major game, though. If we have a major game, it's not in going to be in the majors because... Uh, unless you want to play 6-1 hearts, you know, and hopefully he has 6 hearts. Um, but he didn't bid, you know, he, he, he couldn't reverse into spades, so he could have 4 spades, which means 4-3 in spades are possible. So there's a possible 4-3 split in spades, and you could play 4 spades. There's a possible, um, hell, there's a possible 5-3 fit in clubs. Um except partner didn't bid that and chose to bid his hearts. But at this point in the game, we definitely don't want to start looking for a minor game. Our concern is about getting to, if we don't have a major game, we want to get to a no-trump game. We got 11 points. He's bid the hearts twice. Sadly, you only have one of them, or you might go to four hearts. But you have good spades, you have a four-card diamond suit, and you have a five-card club suit. What do you want to bid? Yeah, I, th I think so. Sure. We got 11 points. We want to let our partner know that the other suits are covered. Um, and But the most important thing is that you are now, you are now basically relinquishing control, right? To this point, you have, you know, as a responder, you're kind of in charge, but now you're going to leave it up to your partner. And you're going to say, um... I'm going to have to go get the dogs in a second. Um, and basically you're saying, uh, if you are at the top of your range, or if there's something good about your hand, could you please bid uh, to no Trump? I'll be right back. I'm sorry. Got to get the dogs.
Sorry about that. Okay, so we get a two no Trump bid. And partner gives us three hearts. So he knows that you've got some diamonds covered, um, but he's still thinking that he wants to play in hearts. He didn't jump straight to hearts. He bid three hearts. Going to go to game. Three hearts is inviting, right? He's he's basically saying, I got a pretty good hand here. I understand you got 11 points. I want you to know that I'm an unbalanced hand with a lot of hearts. And I probably have a stiff or a void in a suit. This is pretty complicated. How about if he'd done this instead? Now, how do you feel about going to game? Now he's basically said, I do have some clubs. We have a second, we have a fit here in clubs. Um, I can support your four with at least three. All right, so now you can think, well, he's got six and either four clubs or three clubs. Um, where do you want to be now? Do you want to, do you want to play in hearts? Do you want to play in no trump? Do you want to play in clubs? I mean, you've got four, I mean, if they have, somebody has a diamond suit, right? No Trump is over, right? Because if, I mean, if the diamond, you know, it's looking like your partner is either short in diamonds or short in spades or short in both. So there's some worries about diamond. On the other hand, you only need nine tricks. If he's got, if he's got, you know, a couple good clubs, like ace, queen, third, or even ace, third, and the queen is in the right spot, in no trump, you might get five club tricks, two spades. In your own hand, you might have, basically, there might be a way to get seven tricks. So when we're thinking about how to bid this, what we want to be thinking about is, well, what tricks am I going to take? So what if you were playing in hearts? Well, we're, you know, unless his hearts are really good, there's a chance we're going to lose some, lose some heart tricks because we're going to be 6-1 at best. right? But on the other hand, he has a little fit with my clubs which means he may have a place to pitch some losers. It also means he's short someplace. I mean, either in spades or diamonds, we're only going to lose one trick, maybe zero tricks, but we're not going to lose a lot in one of those suits. I mean, it's possible he's 2-2 two, two in those suits, in which case we would, uh, you know, we might lose two diamonds, but if he's short in spades, I'm going to have some place for him to pitch some losers. Right? If he's short in diamonds, then it doesn't matter that I have four losers because he only has one. doesn't matter. Right? If he's short in diamonds, he only has one diamond loser. So if I, we were to be able to get, you know, four club tricks, you know, th five club tricks and, you know, a couple hearts, maybe four of his six hearts, a couple spades, I mean, we're getting close to a game there in hearts. So these are the things you got to be thinking about, right? And this is the dynamics of it all. He didn't just bid game after your 2 no Trump. He pushed it back on you. He pushed it back on you saying, well, there's some issues, right? And, I'm, and here's some more information. And once again, you're in the driver's seat. But this time you have your little bit better ability to picture the hand and think about how you could take tricks. And no Trump, if they don't have a diamonds or their diamonds split, you know, it looks like you might be able to get a lot of club tricks and a few heart tricks and a few spade tricks. And you might be able to eke out three no trump. Playing three no trump is an awful lot of fun when you have a running suit. And maybe your clubs will run. Maybe the queen is in the right spot. Maybe 
maybe they break 3-2 and the and you can play the ace king and, and drop the queen or maybe it'll turn out that uh, they'll give it to you lots of times they'll give it to you you never know you get to get the right opening lead and suddenly there but you know that there's a blind spot and that's the diamonds nobody's bid diamonds and a lot of times when I'm thinking about three no trump especially in match points you know, I like to just think about the suits they warned us about, right? Your partner is kind of warning you, and it's kind of warned the defenders as well that there's going to be weakness in either diamonds or spades. All right, so I don't know which is best. You know, I I don't mind the six one. I like the idea of my five card suit. I'm hoping like hell that he's short in diamonds. Um, I'm hoping he might have the queen of spades, or even the jack of spades would be helpful. Right? And I hope his hearts are good. Right? It's not going to be very helpful if he puts down a six-card heart suit headed by the queen and nothing else. Right? So a partner bit him twice, so I'm going to trust him if I go to hearts. So I think most of the people voted for three no Trump, and I wasn't able to talk anybody out of it. And they had the diamonds, and we're down off the top. And in hearts, they give us the right lead. And we should be able to pull this one home. So that's why we play bridge, though. We come to different results. I think either one of those was reasonable. I think maybe even just uh, passing three clubs is reasonable. Since we had five, we know he has three. If we don't think we have game, then maybe we want to get out of three clubs. But uh, we had an invitational hand. We named it early on as Invitational. It wasn't a great hand. It didn't have a fit, which was kind of taking away from stuff. But on the other hand, we had the Ace-King-10, and we had a five-card suit. So I think we were right to look for game. All right, we'll do one more hand real quickly. Um, All right, so this is, this is good. We'll do this one. As you're sitting up in North Sand, you got 10 points. Until your partner bids, you're thinking, well, I don't have an opening hand yet. And then your partner gives you a diamond. Now, nine times out of 10, this means they don't have a five-card major. doesn't mean they don't have a four-card major. And it's very, very broad. But when you're playing with minors, it's a little bit more difficult, right? We don't have that, you know, we haven't found the major strain immediately. So um, if we name our hand, we have 4, 6, 10 with a 5, 4, 2, 2. Um, the queen is kind of off by itself, but it does have the 9 and the 8. You know, a partner had the king and the jack of hearts. We'd be happy with our suit, but we don't know that yet. Um and we have, uh, then we have a kind of a worthless doubleton, which is fine. Um, it would be a lot worse if we had the queen six in diamonds rather than the queen nine eight four in hearts. So at least we don't have an honor over there getting wasted. Um, and we have, uh, we have ace, ace doubleton, right? Which is a nice, nice, nice little holding. So because our goal is always to find a major game, then we must bid our majors here. Holding five four in the majors, we bid the we bid the five card first, and then we bid the four card. We bid a five card spade suit, and then we bid a four card heart suit.
and partner bids four spades. What does he? What does that mean? He's limited his hand again. Actually, right? He's shown support for your spades. How many spades is he promising? Yeah, just four. I call I call that one spade bid. I call that the ambiguous major. And I actually we did do a class on the ambiguous major. Maybe in fact we'll probably even talk about it a bunch next week. It'll be fun. But I call that the ambiguous major because it could be any number of spades and any number of points. That one spade bid is a completely worthless bid, except that it says I got four spades. But now, in response to that, partner has jumped to four. When partner jumps to four, how many points is he counting on you for? Does he think you have a minimum hand? Does he think you have a maximum hand? Does he think you have an invitational hand? He doesn't really know, right, because you were ambiguous. Yeah, I mean, he thinks that you you have maybe five, that across from five cards, five points, across from a minimum hand, he is saying, I can make gain. Cross from a minimum hand, I will make game partner. So he thinks you can make 10 tricks. What do you do now? Well, let's, let's talk about, we got, if he's got 18 points, then I have give him a minimum hand for jumping to four. He's got 18, I have four, that's 22, 24, and four is 26. Eight, six, and four, 10. So 28, we have about 28 points. Sorry, about, that was Mark math there. We have at least 28 points. Partner could have more than that. Do we feel obligated to show him more? Was there any other way the partner could have shown a maximum hand? You know, maybe not. If he didn't have a splinter bid, if he had a stiff, a small stiff, he could have maybe made a splinter bid in that suit to make a game forcing bid. But opener's problem is that he had to make a game forcing bid to you. And opener's second suit is not forcing, right? Opener's rebid is always going to limit the hand, and that's going to allow the responder to pass. So only a jump shift. It's the only in a reverse. Those are the only ways to force for the opener. And here he couldn't do that. Instead, he jumped to game. Yeah, maybe he has three aces. What if we do this? What if you give him 18 points? Give him 18 points, and let's make up a hand that would get to slam. Let's give him the ace and queen of spades. Ace and queen of spades. Actually, we know there's a nine card fit. So we, that's going for us. Give him the ace and queen of spades. That's six points. Give him the ace of hearts, king of hearts. That's 13. Give him the king of clubs. That's all we need in clubs. That's 16. And then we really need him to have the ace of diamonds, or, or right? We got running into losers there. So, do I mean it's not out of it's not stretching it too much to think we could have a slam. We wish we had a stiff. We wish we knew more about partner's hand. But let's say we want to go for slam. Let's say we're going to just play along, partner. Because you know, partner, you think I have a minimum hand, but I don't. You know, you think you're making ten tricks against a minimum hand, but I don't have a minimum hand. I have 10 points. I have a five card suit instead of a four, and it's headed by the King Jack. Now, any bid of a suit over game level promises an ace. All right? So basically, we have gotten to this point. This dynamic has happened. Partner opened, was limited. You made this spade bid that you had to, and you couldn't limit your hand. Partner does you the great favor of saying, I'm making game opposite. You're making game, actually. You play a partner. You're going to have a fantastic dummy because it will make game opposite your five or six lousy points in four spades. Right? Um, so you, you think, okay, if that's the case, well, then I have more than a minimum hand, and I got an ace of clubs. I got a control, and I got the king jack. The only real 
lousy thing about my hand really is the heart suit, right? So I'm going to play along though because I want him to know I have more. So you bid the ace of clubs. You can't bid for no trump because you have two suits with no controls. And you can never use for no trump unless all you know all the suits are controlled. So you can't ask for aces. So you bid an ace. Right? And what you're doing is you're allowing partner to start putting together the hand. Okay, he doesn't have minimum. He's willing to play along for slam. And he has the ace of clubs, or the king of, uh, the ace of clubs. He has the ace of clubs. And looking at his hands, he may really like that. That might, he, that might be all he thinks he needs. Right. But he bids, an, he bids an ace. He bids the ace of diamonds. And it comes back to you. Right. So... What do you do? Does having him thinking, apparently he liked the fact you had the ace of clubs because he showed you a diamond, right? But does that mean that you can now bid slam? Absolutely not, right. We have no idea what's happening in the hearts. So our only bid at this point is to bid five spades. And what does this tell partner? This, this tells, no, 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 that's what, yeah, yeah, it says nothing else to show, partner. I can't do anything about hearts. Yeah. Now, think about this clearly. You, your partner's big, you've got, you've shown more than just a minimum hand, you've shown him the ace of clubs, he's shown you the ace of diamonds. But what you, the, you, the problem with your hand, that thing with glaring, a glaring problem in your hand from the very beginning was the fact that you have four hearts headed by the queen. You have a lousy heart suit. And for that reason, you have to bid five spades. But don't think of it as signing off. Why can't you say it's signing off? Anybody have an idea? How many points does partner have? How many hearts does partner have? Yeah, I mean, partner's basically limited only by the fact he only bid two, he didn't bid two clubs, right? But you, you know, yeah, you, it's just not a sign-off. It literally is just saying, partner, I don't have anything in hearts, right? I can't control hearts. If I had, if I had a heart ace here or something, we'd probably be in slam. But it's saying, partner, I cannot do a thing about hearts. Partner is not going to sign off. It's not a sign off. Partner takes that information into, into his head, and he's doing the same thing you're doing. He's not counting points. He's not, he's not, um, he's not adding. You know, a, I get five points for this and three points for that. He's looking at his cards, and he says, "Oh, the partner with the ace of clubs is really helping me out here. I got the ace of diamonds, um, and I don't care if if he has a heart at all, right?" So. So he goes on to six spades, and now it's his fault if they, it goes down, right? You did, you bid everything you had. You showed more than a minimum. You showed you had that ace of clubs, right? You were you were a positive bidder when you when you started going to slam. You're probably showing five spades. Um, I mean, you knew, you weren't worried about the trump suit, in other words. Can you see all the hands now? How about now? Okay, so now we just count our losers, right? We're counting them from the up from the north hand, right? We got a diamond loser. We don't have a club loser. We have three heart losers and that's going to be the key isn't it somehow we're going to have to get rid of those losers and you know we have nine spades and absent a bad split you know or the queen being in the wrong spot and us not being able to figure it out um 
it's it's hard to say what we would do, but but if we play it white right, Gibb says if we catch that queen of spades that's in e in west, right, and then uh, if we get rid of our hearts, well, Gibb tells us we're going to make this hand. Looks like we'll have to hook the club too, so we have a heart to pitch there. But a lot of work, but at least double dummy, we were in the right space. How many points did we have all together? 4, 6, 10, 14, 18, 22, and 6 is 28 points all together. Yeah, 28. So why are we bidding slam with 28 points? I thought you had to have 33 to make a slam. The points don't matter is the bottom line here. It's, what, it's where the points are, right? It's where the points are. It's what the distribution is. It's whether the, the you have cover cards. Uh, is my partner going to cover my losers? Is my partner going to give me a place to pitch my losers? Is my partner going to give me a place to rough my losers? All right. So here we get we get to a twenty-eight point slam, and you know what twenty-eight point slams at imp games. You know if you're playing a Swiss on the weekend, you're playing the big Sunday Swiss, and you make the slam that the other part the other team doesn't make you're likely winning that match. Right. So, um, anyways, use the sheet. I, we couldn't begin to cover all that in this class, but we certainly, this is stuff we can work on another time. And of course, um, I do uh, private lessons, but you know, this is stuff that uh, we can work on um, at another time. So next, in fact, next week, we're gonna kind of look at, you know, when I, the, started when the idea for the class was to grow beginners up to intermediates. I'm pushing the time limit here. I'm sorry. Push them up to intermediates. And, and my idea was to come up with these are the gadgets you have to play. And it's going to kind of be like that. But I think we're going to focus on gadgets that help you find major fits. Um, so I will send some stuff um, for next week and I'll send this movie along to you. And uh, that's it for today. Thank you, Donna. All right, so see you next week.